public fury over RFK Jr.'s conversation about vaccines and other topics with Joe Rogan hasn't gone anywhere. Mehdi Hassan has continued to weigh in on the question of whether or not so-called professionals, the experts in the room, should have to go head-to-head -head with uh, RFK Jr. to discuss the issues that they say he gets so wrong. Let's take a look. The latest fake controversy on the right is the refusal by one of America's top doctors, top vaccine experts, to debate one of America's top anti-vaxxers. Yes, podcaster Joe Rogan and Twitter owner Elon Musk are just some of the wealthy vaccine conspiracy enablers currently insisting that Dr. Peter Hotez debate anti-vaxxer Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who is, lest we forget, running for the Democratic presidential nomination. Why would anyone think that's a debate worth having? What next? Neil deGrasse Tyson debates Alex Jones on astrophysics. Noam Chomsky debates Lauren Boebert on Cartesian linguistics. It's So there are a couple of things I think immediately right off the bat are wrong with that particular analogy. For one, I don't think it has to be Dr. Hotez, but because this issue area is actually complex, as a journalist who's trying to understand it, I would be benefited by more medical experts, vaccine experts actually weighing in to help interpret some of these studies. The accusation uh, that is uh, being that uh, is being leveled at RFK Jr. is that he's misinterpreting some studies and the like. And I would like someone who has more expertise than both I have and RFK Jr. have to weigh in. But the other issue is this idea that RFK Jr. is just some guy off the street with no knowledge at all. While I do think that credentialism and obviously going to school and having an education and a professional um, career in doing this work obviously informs your perspective in a way that I think is very useful. RFK Jr., like it or not, has also made this a personal cause of his. He's not some you know, dum-dum off the sidewalk. He is an attorney who spent his career 30 years litigating um, toxic tort-style cases, environmental harms. When And he has said this before, and he is right. When you are litigating a um, environmental case like this, when you're litigating any case, you become an expert on the underlying science. You just do. It's it's told to us. I remember starting as a paralegal and being told there are 11 people who understand this financial instrument in the world and you're going to be the 12th. That's what you have to take on when you do this kind of work. So. I, the part of the issue with RFK Jr., when people are covering him, including journalists, is that because he does have such a head start and so much knowledge in this issue area, I think it kind of does take an actual expert to push back meaningfully. I've been reminded, uh, this is from, from Twitter, that back when it was the Trump administration doing the vaccines, remember there was all those kind of, de there was many Democrats, including I think Kamala Harris, Kamala who Harris. were like, I'm going to be very reluctant to take a Trump vaccine. Guess what? Peter Hotez was one of those people telling Yahoo News, uh, so no vaccine has ever been approved on it. This is just from the article. No vaccine ever approved on an emergency use authorization basis, said Dr. Peter Hotez, a top vaccine expert, except once to overcome unusual technicalities on a military anthrax vaccine. Quote, we don't do EUAs for vaccines, Hotez said. It's a lesser review. It's a lower quality review. And when you're talking about vaccinating a large chunk of the, Amer chunk of the American population, that's not acceptable. <laughs> well, it changed his tune. You know what's so funny about that is that is a line of argument that RFK Jr. brought up on Joe Rogan in which he brings up from time to time because their argument is that the reason that the media wouldn't acknowledge any therapeutic benefits to some of these, you know, ivermectin or, you know, mm -hmm. th those kinds of things was because you can't get an EU grant, you can't get the emergency uh, use granted mm. if there is an alternative therapy that's demonstrated to work. So I'm not vouching for that theory. All I'm saying is that it sounds very close to the kinds of arguments that were being made when Trump was the one that was in the, right. in the White House, and these people were distrustful of his administration and his capacity. So th this, this is what the fundamental problem is. Mehdi Hassan, you know, my former colleague, I, you know, I have respect for Mehdi Hassan, and this isn't personal, but the, it, there is a willingness to say things that are also foundationally untrue from his perspective. Um, referring to someone as an anti-vaxxer when they themselves are vaccinated, their kids are vaccinated, they support vac vaccines, they're just bringing up specific criticisms about certain kinds of vaccines that uh, have certain toxic elements in them that have been under scrutiny for years. That 
I think it's problematic. If you want to say uh, RFK Jr. is overstating what the medical science has proven in terms of a link between these vaccines and autism, or if you want to say that he is um, ignoring the fact that the mercury that was a concern for people has now been taken out of vaccines, and therefore there's a fear mongering that can lead folks not to get the vaccines they needed to prevent measles, mumps, and rubella outbreaks. That would be a fair critique. But if you blast onto the screen like the Kool-Aid man saying, this anti-vaxxer is da 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 you know, you're losing credibility yourself. And to the extent that you're trying to shore up the credibility of someone like Dr. Hotez, there's two ways to do it. One, being honest about what someone like RFK Jr. does and does not claim. And two, having Dr. Hotez or someone with the authority to meaningfully push back where RFK Jr., I'm sure sometimes is wrong, actually get into the fray. Whether that's a debate or like a written exchange of questions or something moderated by someone other than Joe Rogan, I don't have a dog in that fight. But it seems obviously beneficial for the public to be hearing from the so-called experts at least as much as they do from Joe Rogan, who has a show that gets more viewership than pretty much any other program in America. So unlike you, I don't have any respect whatsoever for Mehdi Hassan. <laughs> I am not a fan in the least. And in fact, I, I'm actually not surprised by his sort of like opposition to debates in general because I think he's a very disingenuous debater. When he structures debates or disagreements, he you know uses the power of his position as a, as a host to browbeat whoever the guest is. He did that to Matt Taibbi in a very, um, I think, cruel and unfair way, greatly overstating the ramifications of the acronym error that had emerged in the I Twitter think that's files. True. Um, but I also think that he had a good point about the, he spe specifically asked Matt Taibbi to come on to talk about the accusations that um, he was ignoring mm -hmm. um, the Modi censorship and Matt Taibbi was unprepared to answer that question. So I think both of those things are true, that Mehdi was unfair, but that Matt Taibbi also wasn't, uh, wasn't prepared to ask the question that was fair. So I think if Dr. Hotez is not the right person, and look, you know, he's getting a lot of, you know, he's now speaking out about the harassment and attacks he's getting. Nobody should issue death threats to everyone. I was very, I was uncomfortable with people like confronting him on his home. That's not something I condone in like any circumstances. Um, whatever your frustrations with big pharma or the federal bureaucracy, the medical establishment, like, you know, keep it civil. It's not all on this one guy. But that said, he is a he is a participant in our public dialogue about what the policy should be. He recommended, he didn't just say, I think the vaccines are great and you should take them after it was the Biden administration doing right. vaccines. Let's be careful. You know, he was ca more cautious about them when it was Trump's vaccine. Right. But he didn't just say vaccines are great. I think you should take them. He recommended lots of pandemic policies. He, you know, he was opining on what the government should, should make you do or prevent you from doing or require you to do. So he's, he's in the fray of ideas. Maybe he's not the right yeah. guy for debate with with RFK Jr. He maybe he can recommend someone who is Sanjay Gupta was on was on Joe Rogan and they talked a lot about uh, about the ivermectin discussion. Maybe he's the right person to talk with RFK Jr. about and, what's and in the Hotez vaccine. Someone like that. on on right. on uh, Joe Rogan before. So credit where credit's due. I think for me it's not about debate me bro culture. What it was mm -hmm. would be beneficial is if when someone says something, we don't have to wait a week for the next person to respond on a podcast, we can just quash the beef <laughs> immediately. Right. You said this, you said this, what's the truth? Let's just talk it out right here, right now. And look, I, I get it. I get not everybody is equally adept rhetorically at that particular skill. But you're telling me that there's not a virologist, and a, a vaccine expert in America who can sit down and have those two skills at the same time? It's really right. incumbent on all of us. The way that, that RFK Jr. felt it was incumbent on him to develop expertise in the issue area because he wasn't getting the answers that he felt like he, you know, the, the kind of investigation that he wanted to be investigating. You know, broadly speaking, his claim is that there are a lot of environmental factors, a lot of toxins in our environment. Uh, there are microplastics in our water. There are... You know, um, there is literally uh, aluminum in our vaccines and in our deodorant, and that it's largely unknown over time what effect these things are going to have on our body. I think that's pretty uncontroversial. The thing that the, so the experts, the scientists need to be doubling down on is the cost benefit of not doing something like getting uh, your childhood vaccine schedule, because there are real costs not doing so, even if there are potentially costs to the vaccine. Right. That's their comfort zone and where they should lie. But pretending like it's 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 magic hooey to be concerned about the fact that we ingest 
xenoestrogens and all this other stuff in our environment, it makes them lose credibility. Yeah, and their position is that this is just not something that can be debated or subject for conversation. Like, what are the, 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 the narrowing range of topics you're allowed to debate from the mainstream media democratic consensus is just an issue of concern. They're saying, this is misinformation. There can't be a debate about this because the other side is just wrong. It's decided. And, like, that's becoming a... a do you, I mean, do you feel that way about our foreign policy decisions? Is it like the experts have said? <laughs> they do. It's very, right, they, spoiler, <laughs> they do. And look, again, I'm not saying this from a standpoint. I, I substantially disagree with, uh, I'm sure, a lot of RFK Jr.'s policies or his views. There are, you know, there are other sides on all this. There, you know, he cites studies on vaccines and harms. He's citing these studies. I bet we could have on someone else who would cite a bunch of other studies. But that's, that's like science. It's, that's there's, science. There's different and it's up opinions to, and different outcomes. Yeah. We've all been, I said yeah. this yesterday. I think coffee's good for you. Coffee's bad for you. Eggs have too much cholesterol. Oh, the good cholesterol is good for you. There's a lot. Like uh, people are who are treating like this one study was dispositive are also ignoring what what science actually is. Studies are very narrow in their design. They give you a very narrow slice of of truth, and they're not always telling the full picture. And just because the city says there's no evidence of X demonstrated mm -hmm. in, in whatever we were investigating, doesn't mean that the further study isn't warranted. And in some of the very studies that they're pointing at saying this was conclusive, in the study it says further investigation is warranted. Here's the other lines of research that should be pursued. One, one other thing I just want to say about this, I was listening to an interview on a liberal Maybe it was pod save or something like that. And um, they were talking to Senator Whitehouse, who apparently has a long relationship, a personal relationship with RFK Jr. Understandably, New England wealthy families are all, you know, whatever. And he was asked about if he still has a personal relationship and what he thinks of him having uh, running for president. Senator Whitehouse says, I support Joe Biden. And I strongly disagree with all of this anti-vax hooey and, and, and characterized his former friend as a flat anti-vaxxer, which I, I disagree. I, I don't agree with his um, statements about vaccine and autism and there having been a proven connection. But I don't think that he is anti-vax. I think that's an inaccurate statement as well. And so if you're even your friends who you have a, like a close personal family relationship with are willing to mischaracterize you in that sort of way, I do think that is precisely why there is so much ambiguity about what it really means to be uh, a misinformation vendor. Both sides are now looking at the other completely with no trust at all because there is a complete and total unwillingness to acknowledge that there's even a kernel of reasonableness with what the other side is saying. Mm. All right, we'll have more rising right after this. Stay tuned.